You're listening to Where You Later with Gene and Tony. Welcome back. This is Gene and Tony. We're broadcasting live from the State Fair today, second to last day of the fair, That's right. actually. And the sun's coming out, so it's warming up. If you're on your way to the fair, please stop by and say hello. We're giving away lots of prizes during the extreme hour, which starts at 11 a.m., and we're located on the uh, corner of Underwood and Murphy. Right now, it's time for a message from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association brought to you by Pest Control Services. When you need an exterminator, you want Greg Keener at Pest Control Services, 952-894-9748. Pest Control Services is a proud member of Angie's List and a member of the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. That's Pest Control Services, 952-894-9748. Tell Greg that Gene and Tony sent you. If you're renting out a property for the first time, there's a lot you need to know so that you can do it successfully and, frankly, keep yourself out of trouble. Luckily, there's a statewide resource with all the tools you need to run your new business successfully. In fact, the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association regularly holds a seminar called Accidental Landlord, specifically designed for people who are renting out a property for the first time. They also have residential leases, security deposit agreements, a lead disclosure, and lots of other forms. They even have brochures on the principles of successful property management and the eviction process that you can download for free. So if you want to know more about the Accidental Landlord Seminar or other classes about owning, managing, or maintaining anything from a single unit to a growing apartment portfolio, visit the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association's website mmha.com. That's two M's, mmha.com. I want to mention that the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association is letting us give away free classes at the um, MHA. If you want to participate in a CIC Lunch and Learn, that would be for homeowner association members, or a board training, if you serve on the board of your homeowners association, please sign up with uh, one of our lovely interns here, um, for one of these classes, and we'll be happy to send you the information. Just indicate uh, that you, you would like one of those free classes. That's right. And this is also if you are uh, a uh, a landlord. Perhaps uh, you own a rental property or just beginning to do so. Or you're uh, even just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, MHA has got uh, some great uh, seminars, get-togethers, and events for the small investor That's and right. owner of property That's as well. right. So just sign up for our newsletter uh, with one of the girls up front here and indicate on your signature, next to your signature, that you would like an MHA class. That's right. And uh, for our listeners, give us a call, 651-289-4488. Uh, we've been uh, talking about this homeowners association where uh, they have uh, just... Uh, really been uh, balking at the idea that uh, collectively they need to be responsible uh, for uh, repairing the roofs for after the commonly owned real estate after and, a yeah. uh, storm yeah and, that's right. uh, and that to me uh, seems uh, highly unusual well and best. you were mentioning before the break gene that we are big proponents for individual rights but this is how that works as a community, you can make your own decisions. That's why we don't mm -hmm. like to see the state interfere with legislation that changes your rights in your community. We want your association community to have the chance to make those decisions for itself. And apparently that's what happened in this association. We just don't really agree with the decision yeah, they made. That's I, right. Yeah, I, we, I, we like their ability to make their own decisions. You're right. Yeah. And I, I, we're, we're proponents if, if, uh, the, if the state allows, uh, for example... Uh, an individual homeowner association and saying you don't have to collect money and set it aside for capital improvements for these major items that need to be yeah. replaced or repaired uh, over time you can instead just give each other a, a bill to have it done right now if the state would allow that I'm for that I'm for that a hundred percent because um, how is that any different than a single family homeowner you know right a, a single family homeowner uh, most of those people don't have a reserve fund, uh, and there's no requirement by the state of Minnesota that says you live in a single-family home, and uh, you've got to set aside so much money each uh, each and every month for your roof, for your siding. When That's that right. needs to be uh, replaced, right. when the deck needs to be done, uh, you dig in, and people end up finding where they have to. You get your brother-in-law to come over and help you, right? <laughs> Well, and there's a number of different things that uh, people do, <laughs> right. but but uh, there isn't that requirement of having the fund set aside. No. Uh, but the state of Minnesota says if you live in a homeowners association, 
some of that money has got to be set aside each and every each That's and right. every month. And it's all because you own real estate together as a community Mm -hmm. so you need some kind of organization that's going to (laughs) administer and maintain that real estate and with that being said it it, i think it is a good idea to do it that way i mean if you have if you have a problem doing things collectively uh with other people in your community and uh and uh in that homeowner association then it's better that you just don't live in a homeowners association. <laughs> I know that's so funny, isn't it? I, we've had people call us countless times to talk about what they don't like about their homeowners mm-hmm. association, and nine times out of ten, what they're complaining about is something they agreed to when they purchased their home. They just didn't pay attention. That's right. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. What What do you th- think about uh, this situation? Is that this is association handling things right? Let's turn to our eyes and attention to another situation this is happening in uh georgia and uh this is the exact opposite in this last story we talked about an association that wanted to pass everything on to the individual they wanted to be hands off that's right here uh that's uh, the exact opposite the homeowner association is uh not pleased with six homeowners here's what took place in uh in uh, cummings georgia there is a homeowners association that um, uh, said that if you want anything done to the exterior of your home, you need to go to the board of directors and get permission. Sure. that's very uh, common. Before having, for, for having something installed, repaired, or replaced. And there were six homeowners that got together and said, you know what, uh, the apron to our driveway um, all needs to be redone. So why don't we all uh, go together, get the same contractor, save some money. That's mm-hmm. a good idea. Mm-hmm. And then they went ahead and had uh, what's called, uh, uh, they had the cement done, and then they had uh, a, a stamp They had put stamped up. concrete driveways put in, and all, concrete. Of, all six. So it looks like uh, bricks, and it'll, yep. th- that part was, was fine, too. However, the association had one little uh, caveat, and that is uh, in the apron, they had to have a 24-inch cement um uh, frame or border yeah. around uh, this stamped concrete. And this is why you should go to your association before you do any work like this, so you can find out what these requirements are, right? So, in this particular case, the, these homeowners did not do that. No. And now the homeowner association is saying, we're going to charge you uh, $25 a day until you get this oh, my. Uh, <laughs> replaced. What do you think about that idea? You know, I don't know. Fines are a difficult thing. When you're fining your neighbors, you're fining each other. I, I think fines should be used as a prod and encouragement for compliance. But I don't know. If, if, if someone is not going to comply, they're also not going to pay your fine. I, I have, I have a, a, an issue with an association that wants to just go with a, a daily fine that just keeps racking up over and over again. Yeah. Because I think we've seen historically that there has been uh, a precedent after precedent set in the courts right. where um, judges don't want to, no. to give that and award that to a homeowners association. It doesn't seem reasonable, and it doesn't seem reasonable to the courts. And I think it it kind of scales up the whole problem. It, 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 it incenses people. It, it uh, ratchets up their issue if they're getting slapped with a daily fine. Yes. Yeah. In, in this particular case, most, you know, I've talked about this before, I think there's a much better approach to take in uh, for a homeowners association getting things done. What do you recommend? Um, and it, it, it is a matter of going through small claims court. And um, in most cases, with most items that we're talking about, we're talking about uh, something that could be done through small claims because... Small claims will allow you to take another individual or entity to court for up to $7,500. Okay. All right. So a lot of issues that arise in homeowners associations are under that limit. That's right. And in this particular case, the association, if the homeowner was not uh, living up to uh, what they should have in the installation, they just should have taken them to court, shown the, the, the judge their governing document saying that they have the authority to ask for this to be changed. Yep. Show the judge that they have uh, uh, a, a bid to have this done by another vendor, to have it changed out, and ask the judge to award them with the ability to make this yeah. change. Yeah. Once they've done that, they're able to do that 
And uh, they have, once they get their judgment, uh huh, yeah, they have their judgment in place. And after this, now they can take it to the sheriff, and the sheriff would help and enforce, enforce it. it. I, I think what we're saying is the board needs to remember that their goal, their purpose, is to keep the rules and regulations um, in place and to and to encourage and maybe force people to comply with the governing documents. You're all required and responsible for complying with that. A daily fine is punitive and and your goal is not to punish people for doing the wrong thing your goal is to get people to do and the right thing at the end thing. of the day it, this the issue hasn't been resolved there you go that and that's the big thing yep. well we've got to take a quick break when we come back hang around we've got the extreme hour coming up here on AM 1280 the patriot